I need to mind my own business. So good job, I agree with science. <laughs> the pursuit of this goal isn't always fun, but the idea that I could get it, that I really could get to my goal is exciting. Hey guys, so I know this isn't normal <laughs> for me to chat with you while I'm driving, but I don't think I'm gonna have time for a walk today. Probably just gonna have to like walk in place in front of my TV uh, today while Amelia's napping. And I don't have time to sit down and film not in the car, so this is what we get. I just wanted to do a quick update of week six of Body Slims, the seminar, the my weight loss, all of that. So my weight loss, why well, I'll just get it out of the way right at the beginning. I lost about a pound ish. I don't even, I'm not even being precise this week, honestly, because I have found from weighing every single day that my weight goes up and down each day. Like there was a day this past week that I weighed 170.8. And then there was a day where I weighed 172. Like it's just, it depends on the day. So, um, so I'm just kind of averaging it out. I know that's really not how life works, but that's what I'm doing today. So that's it. <laughs> Um, so I guess that means I lost around a pound and a half over the last week, which isn't great, but it's not terrible. It's fine. It is as expected. A pound to a pound and a half is fine. It's fine. Um, I struggled to get my walks in every day. Yesterday, I did not have time to take a walk and I ended up just doing like just literally walking and dancing in place for 40 minutes. Uh, so I still got my 10,000 steps, but I know that is not the Body Slims program. The Body Slims program is that you go for a walk for one hour. Uh, and I usually get about like three miles, three and a quarter miles in that way. So I didn't do it yesterday, but I still got my steps in. So it is what it is. Uh, the other thing is diet. I have been a little uh, generous with myself <laughs> over the last week. I think my hormones are playing a role in that. I have just been extra, I don't know, moody, I guess, wanting carby things. And on top of that, I don't know if you know, but there was an election yesterday and uh, that was super stressful. So. I think the whole country can probably agree that uh, that we were all a little nervous and maybe some of us are still nervous and maybe some of us are happy and relieved. Uh, but either way, this past week, I really struggled to eat within my calorie limit. So I didn't go crazy, I didn't go overboard, but I didn't stay within the limit. So that is the truth. That is how I performed this past week. In the seminar, Jer asked us to give ourselves like a self-assessment and I did that and I noticed that I was not doing everything 100%. I've known that. I mean, I live with myself. I know who I am. So I knew I, knew I wasn't doing everything 100%, but when I really listed out like every single thing that Body Slims is, and that it involves, I realized how much I wasn't doing it 100%. It's not, like I kind of view body slims when I'm thinking about it casually. I just think about like, okay, I'm monitoring my calories and restricting my calories and I'm taking my hour walk every day. And if I'm doing those two things, then I'm good. But, uh, and I watch the seminar multiple times every week. It's one seminar that comes out once a week, but I watch it repeatedly. And so I'm like, well, if I'm doing those things, then I'm fine, right? Uh, but as it turns out, there's a lot more to it that I've been sort of like slacking on and making excuses for. Like, well, I don't really need to do this and I don't need to do that and I don't have to listen to this thing and I don't have to 
you know, do this, the stretching video and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, long story short, I haven't been doing everything a hundred percent. I have absolutely refused, sorry, going over train checks. Um, I have absolutely refused to do, to weigh my food. Um, that is one of the things that, or that Jairus talks about being like really important is weighing your food so that you're getting accurate calorie measurements. I have not weighed one ounce, one gram, one scintilla, to use a court term. No, zero, not one scintilla. Uh, I have not, I have not weighed one tiny bit of food this whole time. I bought a scale at the beginning in preparation, haven't done it. Um, am I that concerned that I'm going to start doing it? No, <laughs> probably not. Probably not. I am reasonably happy with losing a pound and a half a week. I'm not mad at that. I feel like I have to find a balance. And this is not the program. This is, has nothing to do with what the program says. The program says do this 100%. Be really strict. Don't let up. No excuses. Okay, that is the program. So what I'm about to say is just me personally. Just Megan, myself. Um, I have to do whatever is going to be sustainable for me. And while I do believe that weight loss is not something that needs to be sustained for the rest of my life, <clears throat> like I don't, I'm not going to be in weight loss mode for the rest of my life. So whatever diet I'm doing right now doesn't have to be a lifelong lifestyle choice. I do believe that I need to do something that I am going to willingly stick with for a reasonable amount of time. So if I calculated it the other day, if I lose around six pounds a month for the next several months, I could be at my goal, my ultimate dream, dare to dream goal weight. I could be there as early as the end of April or as late as the end of June, early July. So I need something that is going to be sustainable for me for at least the next like five months, five to seven months. Okay, so sorry, I got, I had to pick Amelia up, so she's in the car now, but a few more minutes until I get home, so let's finish this up. What are my thoughts on the seminar this week? I thought the seminar was really meaty. Uh, there were a lot of good points this week. The main point that he talked about in the seminar this week was that it's basically about, it was about brain chemistry, the chemicals that go around in your brain uh, that, that get you going in the right direction or that keep you stuck or prevent you from, from moving. So, you know, I did find this to be very relevant to me. So he talked about, you know, uh, serotonin and dopamine and uh, there were a couple of other uh, there were a couple of other hormones or chemicals that he talked about but those were the two big ones as far as I'm concerned and it made a lot of sense because I used to be depressed I would say uh, and I have had a lot of anxiety and I used to be on a serotonin reuptake inhibitor and so I know, you know, I know what it feels like to have a serotonin deficit and to feel like, you know, to have no motivation, basically, to have less than zero motivation, to feel like there is a force pulling you into your couch or your bed and not letting go. Uh, and so I, you know, there were, I've been in therapy for years and years and there, <laughs> There was a girl in my therapy group, a, a peer, who one day, you know, we did we do these calls all the time. So she heard probably had heard me say the same thing over and over again about how frustrated I was that I couldn't feel better and all this, and I couldn't get motivated and I couldn't, you know, whatever. And I was talking about all the reasons why I couldn't and all the this and the that. And she just looked at me and said that I should start exercising and eating better. And I was just like, wow, what an idea. What an idea. Like, yes, of course I should start exercising and eating better. But when you have
have that much inertia, it is so impossible to believe that, that you can start moving your body and you can start sort of rolling this massive stone in the right direction when it feels like it's just laying on top of you, um, keeping you pinned down. And so I, I remember that feeling and I believe that that is probably how a lot of people who are depressed feel, that they're just pinned under this massive boulder and, and the idea of getting up and moving the boulder by themselves to feel, to feel better uh, feels ridiculous and silly and impossible. So what the seminar was saying is that, you know, you, since we're at this point in our weight loss program, you know, we're on week six, we've been at it for six weeks, that you, like now that we have the, the chemicals flowing in the right direction, we're, we're feeling good, we're moving, we're doing things well, we're seeing success, that it is our duty and our job to take advantage of that momentum and keep it going, keep those chemicals going in the right direction. Because once you stop, uh, it's really hard to get back on track. And I definitely agree. I agree. So that was, I mean, I don't know if it was an opinion, it's science, I suppose. So it doesn't really matter if I agree or not, but I, but I do. Uh, so good job. I agree with science. <laughs> Um, and then the other thing he was talking about, once you hit your goal, once you reach and accomplish what it is you're going after, that you actually need those chemicals <laughs> to start to go, right? To get there, which seems kind of counterintuitive. I think that's what he was saying anyway. So that's why he was sharing that it's really important for you to have the very clear picture of what it is you want for your goal. Uh, that if like, that's why he, he encourages people in the program on a regular basis. He encourages us to go and look at all the success stories, look at the testimonials, you know, have a vision, have a vision board, whatever, like have a picture on your phone of what you're working for, what you want to look like, or what, you know, what your health goals are, whatever it is. To, he's, he's like, it's so important to have a really, really clear vision of what it is you're going for because that will help produce those dopamine, like the right chemicals basically in your brain that are going to keep you motivated. That's why he talks about the difference, not in this seminar, but in a previous one, the difference between a push goal and a pull goal. A push goal is something where you feel like, Oh, well, I guess I have to like with weight loss, like, well, I guess I got to stop eating all the stuff I like, you know, cause it's not healthy. Like that's a push goal. That's somebody pushing you or an outside force pushing you towards something that you don't really want. But a pull goal is something that you are like really excited about something that is pulling you towards it. Like you can't resist it. Right? So that is this idea of having that clear vision. Like for me, I am picturing, I'm like on Pinterest all the time looking at leotards that I want to buy. Like these really expensive, beautiful uh, Yumiko leotards that cost like a hundred dollars a piece. I have never owned one in my life, but in my mind, I'm like, okay, my goal is I want to buy a custom Yumiko leotard that fits me beautifully, that I feel beautiful in, that I can, when Amelia is in preschool next year, um, and I have time to go take adult ballet classes in person, I'm gonna show up wearing this gorgeous leotard, I'm gonna feel so beautiful, and I'm gonna look at myself and be proud of myself. That is my pull goal. Like, that would be amazing to me, uh, especially at my age, to be like, showing up in ballet class looking like a ballerina. So that's kind of the gist of that. Also, there's a lot of talk about fear versus opportunity, right? So any anything like this where you're approaching something that's going to be difficult and you have 
two options. You can look at the situation as something to be afraid of, something to be like, oh goodness, I don't know if I can do this. It's going to be really hard. It's going to be really uncomfortable. It could be dangerous, scary, whatever. Versus looking at a challenge as an opportunity, looking at it as, okay, yes, this will be uncomfortable. This will be a challenge, but I'm so excited for what I could find, like what I could find as a result of pursuing this opportunity is going to be worth it. And even if I don't get the ultimate goal, I'm going to learn something along the way and there is value in pursuing it. And then the last part that I wanted to touch on that has to do with that is this whole idea of the thrill of the hunt, which is kind of what I was just talking about. Like the, like he was talking about how cats, there was some study done on cats and where they get the biggest dopamine hit is not from actually catching a bird or a, any kind of prey. It's from that moment where the prey presents itself and the cat thinks that it has a chance. And it gets really excited and it gets all these like feel good chemicals going where it's like gonna, it knows it's about to hunt. Like the hunt is the part that's thrilling to them. And so I think for me in terms of the weight loss, the pursuit of this goal isn't always fun, but the idea that I could get it, that I really could get to my goal is exciting. And I'm, I'm already thinking about how this applies to so many other areas of my life, like my small business where I'm a counselor. The idea of having a full practice, right for me right now, part-time, that would be like eight to 10 clients. And which is not too many to try and gather. And I'm about halfway there. I think right now I have five or six. And so for me to think about Instead of looking at, oh no, this is going to be really hard and awkward and painful and I don't like marketing and it's really scary to put myself out there and what if I fail? Instead of looking at it like that, it's like, what if I go after it and I get it? Like, what would it be like to have that income every month and to not have to worry about the financial piece every single month? Like, what would it look like? If I had a full caseload and I had full paying clients and I was bringing in enough income so that I didn't even have to think about it financially. I didn't even have to worry if I can fill up my tank and gas or if I can do an extra grocery run, right? Because that's pretty much most of what the seminar was about. Let me just check my notes. I'll be right back. I checked my notes because <laughs> I did take a lot of notes on the seminar this week. So I think those were really the highlights. I think I met like amazingly, I was able to remember pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. So that's incredible because I feel like I have not been super focused lately the past day or two. I have now lost a total from the time I started Body Slims in September. I have lost a total of 10 pounds, which is great. I feel great about it. My goal is to lose 18 pounds for the whole program. I have four more weeks to do that. We'll see. I, I always said from the beginning, I'd be happy to lose 15 to 20 pounds. So if I hit 15, that would still be within my goal. I'd be okay with it. If I get closer to 20, that would be amazing. So I'm trying to be realistic. I'm trying to like I said earlier, I'm trying to just do what is going to be doable for me. I'm not somebody who is interested in having like a five pound a week weight loss because quite frankly, that's not realistic for how much I weigh right now. It would be silly to expect to lose five pounds a week when I weigh 170 pounds or 172 pounds, right? That doesn't make sense. Um, if I weighed 250 pounds or 300 pounds, sure, I could lose five to 10 pounds a week, but that's not where I'm at. So I'm trying to keep my blinders on. I was getting a little distracted by some other people in the Body Slims unofficial Facebook group. They don't have an official Facebook group. So I was getting a little distracted by some of the other people's numbers, their dramatic numbers, but then it, 
I had to remind myself like, Megan, this is me. This is my journey. This is how I am doing. It doesn't matter if other people are getting off track. It doesn't matter if other people are doing it perfectly. It doesn't matter if people are losing 10 pounds a week. It doesn't matter if other people are gaining five pounds a week and not doing the program at all. Like how I feel about my journey is about me. It is just about my own participation, my own achievements, my own effort that I'm putting in. Uh, it doesn't like, just because I'm seeing other people, maybe like it goes both ways, right? Seeing people have these dramatic losses and maybe feeling a little bad that happens, but also I am in danger really of going the other way. When I see other people say like, Oh, I've been so bad. I've only lost five pounds or I lost 10 pounds, but then I gained five back because I went to a wedding and da da da. Like when I see those type of posts, I have a tendency to feel like superior, like, Oh, well I didn't do that. Like I'm losing a pound every week or I'm losing two pounds or two and a half, you know, whatever. I need to just pay attention to myself. I need to mind my own business. <laughs> so, uh, I think that's what I have for you today. I am excited for the program to continue. Uh, I know, you know, November is just a really crazy busy month for me. I don't have a lot of time to take my walks anymore. So I'm going to have to just get creative with it and make sure that I'm moving every day and getting my heart rate up. I was actually really happy with the, the like dance video I was watching, my workout video I was watching yesterday. In the past, like back in July, when I first tried a couple of those videos, I was winded after 15 minutes. And yesterday I did two 20 minute videos in a row, like just back to back and just moved the whole time, jumping around, dancing around, walking in place, marching in place, dancing with Amelia, picking her up, swinging her around for 40 full minutes. So I feel like my stamina has definitely improved. My functionality as a mom has improved. So those are really big deals to me in addition to the actual weight loss. Uh, so you know, we're just going to do our best every day. So thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned to see how the rest of this goes. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to probably still be weight, weight lossing. I'm probably still going to be working on my weight loss plan after body slims ends, uh, the first week of December. I'm going to continue until I reach my ultimate goal which will not be probably, like I said, until April or July of next year. So this journey is going to continue. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's it for now. I love you. Thank you for watching. If you want to join my Facebook support group, please go ahead and join. I will link it in the description. And if you want to get my weekly email newsletter, definitely check that out. That's also linked because I send out some thoughts on personal growth and mental health and self-awareness and all that kind of stuff. And I really enjoy writing it. So thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Bye.